Okay. Is it working this time? Oh, this sucks. Okay. I think the orientation is right now. <laughs> My phone was locked. delete this video. Live. Aha, there. Okay. Got it. Hi again. <laughs> okay, I think I got to fix the orientation this time. Thank you so much. But as you can see, uh, it's usually their be bedtime right now. At least this one's a week. Okay, let me just set up the screen. I know, I'm sorry. I actually set it up on time. It's just that the first one that I ran had the wrong orientation because... Yes, they are both toys. Anyway, my phone was locked to the orientation and I didn't want the um, portrait orientation for the screen. So I had to relaunch. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here we go. So I'll try to make this live as quick as possible. I know I said this twice already <laughs> since our previous two lives. Oh my gosh, it went to one hour. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's begin because it's quite late. Oh my gosh, hi Kirsten! <laughs> Your mom always sends me messages on Instagram. Oh, Summer, come here. Okay, come here, Summer. Mm. Go say hi. She's, she's the most lazy dog, as you can see. 
She doesn't like being disturbed, but yeah. She smells really nice right now. Samaru, can you please? <laughs> Mm. Mm. Can you please not hide? Okay, do you want to stay there? Okay. Oh, madam. Maybe they want to stay there better. Okay. So, I think I forgot to go live last month. Probably because it was crazy. And um, the Philippines went on lockdown again because of COVID. I don't know how it is for your home countries. Do we have other people from the US? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Kirsten is from the US, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's get this um, as quick as possible. So um, I said we were going to talk about um, the mistakes of Puro ownership in general. I have a video coming up on that also, but it's more of like a general video on dog ownership. So let's be more quite specific for the Puro breed. So please feel free to send your questions on the comment section and we will try to answer as much as we can. Um, the reason why I decided on this topic is because so many people are asking um, very similar questions on um, the same problems that I had when I had them for the first time. So. I'll try to answer as much um, questions as I can. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> From Hungary and Malaysia. Thank you so much. <coughs> Excuse me. Do we have questions? Thank you guys so much for loving the girls. Um, that really means a lot to me. I actually have a dilemma for Bailey right now. So I mentioned it many times before that... Um, she has a lot of health issues. One of them was caused by one major mistake that I did before. Um, I mentioned it many times in the previous videos, for example, on the 10 things to know and stuff, that poodles can be picky eaters. I'm not overly generalizing there because there are poodles that are not super picky eaters. Um, one example is Bailey before. Now, the thing is, since she wasn't a picky eater, she... <laughs> eats really fast and eats a lot and the problem with that is that she gains a lot of weight right away and that becomes a problem because she has luxating patella so weight management is very important when a dog has hip or joint problems <clears throat> for that logic that you know the heavier the body then the more strain it gives on the muscles and the bones so in her case we have to do weight management for her the thing is, um, I had, I've had previous experiences with other trainers. I'm not sure if you guys have gone through trainers, but there are different um, ways that they go about training. And one trainer told me that, you know, it's okay. Um, if they're being picky with their food, just leave, um, just set a time frame wherein you will give them food and then you will take it away. Now that would work for some dogs, especially ones that are doesn't have a lot of um, uh, health issues probably. But in her case, when I did that, it worked for some time, but that caused her a lot of problems wherein when she starves, then she gets a super acidic stomach. And at first, when I did my research on the vomiting of the white foam and stuff, it said that it was very normal, which is very true. But um, to her, it may have been not the best decision that I made because that led to her stomach problems. 
And until now, even if, let's say, the kefir solved the problem a lot of times and it does manage it, but the thing is, I still, well, she still gets a lot of um, major attacks, even if that's the case, especially when I control her weight. So her ideal weight is around 3.5 kilograms or lower. And I usually get to maintain that weight for her, but when I do, her attacks on her gastric problems um, become more frequent and it gets stronger each time. So when I talked to my vet about it, uh, <laughs> he just told me to make um, the best choice I can possibly. You know, I, it's either the degeneration of the bone or um, frequent problems of the stomach problem. It's really hard. <laughs> so I'm just trying to, you know, balance it out. I, um, it's either she's chubs like this and she doesn't have the stomach problems, but the consequence is, of course, it hasn't happened yet, but it can happen. But for now, I think I'm more comfortable that she's a little chubs on the chub side if it prevents her um, hyperacidity. Because sometimes her attacks, it takes a few days before it clears. And that's me already giving the usual meds that the vet gives me to stop it before it would... Um, be cured right away after like half a day or something but I think she's building tolerance to the meds that were given to us so it's getting it's getting scary that's that's what's scary for me when um, you use a lot of medications on pets just like with humans we build immunity towards the medicine I mean that's common sense and with her she's building tolerance to the antacids that have been provided for us so that a little scary and the kefir is definitely helping but it will not completely eradicate the problem um, she still has it so that's one main mistake that I can share with you guys um, if you have poodles that are picky eaters I understand that um, you know you you have to there's a fine line that you would have to choose between whether you're really going to follow the trainer or not. Maybe you can try it out for a few times, if see if it would work, and if the, it wouldn't cause um, such problems that I experienced with her, then by all means do it. Because, you know, I, I can't exactly tell you what to feed your dogs. It really depends on what you choose and what kind of lifestyle you want to choose for them. And there's really nothing wrong with whatever it is that works best for you, so long as you do it consistently. But do not ever let uh, your dogs starve. If, if, if you can, you can give them side meals from time to time because it will really save you a lot. Um, again, the vomiting of the white foamy liquid is really very normal for any type of dog so long as it's not, very, it's not as frequent. Um, that was one of my biggest regrets with her. Thankfully, with Summer, she is a picky eater, but um, there is really no major consequence when it comes to her stomach because, in, in my opinion, I think she self-regulates herself because this one has no sense of self-regulation. She will try to steal her food all the time when she's hungry, and she gets more hungry than her more frequently as well. Sometimes there are days when she doesn't eat, um, during those days, it's not because she's sick or anything. So I would just give her treats from time to time just to help out or just to make sure that she doesn't have a super acidic stomach. But when she gains weight, she <laughs> loses her weight on her own without the exercise. This one needs a lot of exercise to be able to do that. Okay, so do we have some questions? How do you suggest getting my nine-year-old poodle along with my nine-month-old mini? He's here for five months. Okay, um, if you're planning to get a second dog, 
my mistake back then was that I didn't do like some sort of introduction with them. It's not, it, it's nothing major, but what I learned from my trainer was they should meet in neutral ground, meaning they shouldn't meet inside the house. If you can, you can make, meet them, let's, uh, make them meet, let's say, outside your gate. That's considered neutral ground. And um, after that, take them out for a walk right away, at least one round around the block, and then make sure that the new dog enters first before your actual dog, because that kind of helps with <clears throat> your dog not being too territorial. Um, it's basically showing the pup that, okay, this pup is going to be part of the family or something. If they don't get along, thankfully I didn't have that experience, but I did experience that when I was asked to help fly a dog named Kato to Thailand uh, two years ago. Uh, that time, <laughs> it was raining, so I was on the phone with my trainer, <laughs> and then he said to make sure that they meet outside. But the thing is, it was raining, so <laughs> I met them. I made them meet in the garage, <laughs> and he told me that's not outside. But you said outside. You never said outside of the gate, and he said they should have met in outside the gate. But I'm like, it's raining. What am I gonna, what am I gonna do? So bottom line. They just met out uh, in the garage. And then when I, I made sure I brought Kato in first before Bailey. Summer never has problems when it comes to visitors, especially other dogs. It's only this one because of her um, attachment to me. So that was one major mistake that I made too. I did not know that attention could be something bad for your pets. Um, I'm not saying that you should ignore your pets, okay? <laughs> That's a totally different thing. But you shouldn't um, give too much attention to certain types of dogs. For example, Bailey. Bailey is one that gets too attached to a certain person. And the more you give her attention, the more she gets anxious and the more she gets possessive of you, which is why I have to control the amount of attention that I give to her. Which is also why a lot of people think that I love Summer more because I cuddle with her more than I do with Bailey. Okay, please understand that they are two different animals and they have two different needs. Which is why, and it was my trainer who told me what I had to do. <laughs> it was quite hard at first, of course, because I was told to ignore my dog for a week and then a month. So it, it, it has... Re really really been hard that time but I saw the improvement when I started doing that so you know you kind of get used to it and stuff and plus Bailey is not the type who likes cuddles anyway whereas Summer um, she's a very very cuddly dog for example even if she's not doing anything she has to be when she sleeps she will try to lean against you she has to be at least touching you but with Bailey, she just needs to be near you. She has to see you and everything. So in that sense, I guess it's okay. But yeah, please. It's not because I love one or the other more. I love them both in different ways. And um, that's also one thing I learned with dog training. Giving attention is definitely love, showing love for your pets. But there are different ways too. For example, with Bailey... Attention is not the kind of love that I give her. It's more of the companionship or when we go out for adventures and going for exercise and stuff. She's my best exercise buddy because she will, her stamina is a lot higher than my what little stamina <laughs> when we go running. It's always, um, she, can, she can take it. Even if she has that luxating patella, um, you'd be surprised. So long as it's not extreme exercise, it's fine. The vet said it's fine because it's also important because exercise helps um, build the muscle and the muscle is the one that kind of holds the joints together and that's the problem with luxating patella because the patella slides side to side like that. 
So if there's muscle that is formed around it, then there's less chances for it to slide. So don't think that um, just because your dog, let's say, has hip dysplasia or something like that, you, can, you have to completely eradicate exercise. In my opinion, no. There are many other ways too, like water therapy. I also think it also depends on the size of the dog. But in this case, um, we got the go signal from the dog, uh, from the vet as well. Um, you can look further into it. I'm no vet, like I said. I'm also just following whatever is recommended to me. And I'm dealing with whatever is available. And for Summer, she's not the best exercise buddy. Oh my gosh. There was one time I almost fell on my face because... After one round and she gets to do her business, all she wants to do is go straight back home where it's cold because here in the Philippines, it's quite hot. <laughs> so she likes the cold weather, uh, the cold weather. It's not exactly weather, but it's usually air conditioned in the, home, in the house. And that's where she usually stays. So when she's tired, she will sit and force you to stop. Okay. Excuse me. <clears throat> right. Uh, let's see if we have other questions here. So we have people from Hungary, Malaysia. Hello. Thank you guys so much for joining us. <clears throat> okay. My nine-year-old dog has severe, a severe collapsing trachea. Oh, hi, Gina. I'm so sorry to hear that. I don't know if you're still here. But um, what did your vet say? I, I hope um, you guys are able to manage it. The collapsed trachea, I think it's here, right? Sometimes people say it's because of the collars or the leashes that tug here, which is why they recommend the harnesses for dogs that are pulling. But in my experience and what my trainer said is that the harness, if your dog is not trained to use the harness yet, then the harness promotes pulling, which is why it's commonly used by huskies that are sled dogs because they need to pull. I mean, they were bred to pull um, heavy load, uh, not heavy load, um, load in for long distances. <clears throat> so the pressure is here and not here. Um, what caused it? I, I would love to know because that's something scary too <laughs> because I use a slip leash on them. So the, co the concept of the slip leash is that it tightens when they pull and when they don't pull, then it loosens up. The scary part there is if you do not know how to use these tools, then it can harm the dog more than help sometimes. But if you learn from a professional, and I highly suggest that you do, the slip leash really solved the pulling problem for the two girls. <clears throat> Hi, Lucky and Coco. Okay, from Sarah. I don't have a dog yet because I can't keep a pet in my current apartment, but I'm planning to move anyways. If you have any ideas on how to prepare before getting a dog, please do tell. For future dog owners, uh, what would be... Maybe you can start preparing the things that you will be needing for them. Um, figuring out if you know your home country has pet insurance, I highly suggest that you do. Because here in the Philippines, I know pet insurances have been kind of starting. It's a trend that's starting. And there is one that's um, being advertised a lot. The thing is, I'm a little scared to try it out first because, like I said, it's something new. And I'm not sure if they are accredited in the vet clinics that we go to. So I'm not really sure if maybe in the near future if they stay because what's scary with insurance is here in the Philippines also is that if not enough people um, sign up then of course the company will go bankrupt and I wouldn't want that right <laughs> so you can check for pet insurances that will save you a lot of money in the long run um, find a possibly a good dog trainer and figure out Let's say if you're going to be moving to an apartment, 
I'm not so sure how it's gonna work out if it's a carpeted apartment because there was one viewer who commented in the potty training video which which was quite true because I never really tackled it what if your house is carpeted then the method that I taught there wouldn't work as well because you can't just let the dog pee everywhere in the carpet right because once the dog pees in the carpet it's kind of hard to remove the smell of the pee it's easy for the human to remove the smell of the pee for the human, but not necessarily for the dog. Even if, let's say, you put bleach and stuff like that, which I highly discourage because bleach is really, really bad for your, not only your pets, but also for you. On certain things that you can keep smelling, I highly discourage that. But for them, they can still smell that. Um, my trainer said <laughs> the easiest way to do it is to re uh, replace the carpet. And of course, that's something you wouldn't want. And it's not easy to do that. So for carpeted, uh, I never really thought about that. Because in the Philippines, we don't really... Well, we did once have like a carpeted... The rooms were carpeted, but we never had dogs back then. That's a good question though. What what would I do? What would you guys do if it was in a carpeted apartment? So you have to consider those things. I wouldn't recommend um, a carpeted floor if you're training your pups. If your apartment could have an area where there's no carpet, maybe the kitchen, then that could be a good setting for you to train your dog. Um, what you can do is try to prepare how number one is potty training of course because you wouldn't want them to do their business everywhere so the apartment that you're going to be looking for not only does it have to be um, pet friendly then i also suggest you try to prepare how you're going to go about with the training with the potty training and the crate training and stuff because that would really save you a lot of time because when i got them <laughs> The funniest thing is, I thought that if I picked them up from the breeders, then they would provide me at least a crate for them. Apparently, you have to bring your own crate. Actually, that was my mistake. Because <laughs> I think it's common sense that you should be bringing your own crate, but I didn't. So, when I brought home Summer, because she, thankfully she was really small, my gosh, I felt so bad because the breeder put her in a paper bag. A literal paper bag, and she was sitting on the passenger seat, and then I just put the seat belt over it. But man, thankfully she was she was such a nice puppy. But yeah, she she didn't cry, she didn't move, she just slept in the paper bag. So make sure you have a crate when you pick up the pup, or talk to the breeder that you're gonna be getting your pup from, if they're gonna be providing you a crate, because some breeders do provide the crate. Yeah, make sure you have a crate. Don't be like me. Because when I thought about it, because I, I was driving, I was alone that time. I came from work and then I went straight to the house of the breeder right after and picked her up. I could have brought someone, right? They could have carried her. But yeah, she was in a paper bag when I brought her home. As for Bailey, I think I had a driver back then. I asked my cousin to drive me to her breeder and then I was just carrying her. Again, I did not have... A crate. One one thing that I can suggest too is bring um, a shirt that you used and use it as the um, the cover for the crate or while you carry your pup so that they can smell you and um, some people say that it's to get them acquainted with um, the new house that they're gonna be in. I hope that helps. All right. Sleepy poodles. <laughs> yeah. Um, to be fair, they were a lot more active than this. Uh, she was a lot more active than this in the past. And <laughs> I tired them out before this. Because otherwise, they're going to be doing their zoomies right now. And uh, we wouldn't want their crazy barking while we're doing this. Me, for example, I stopped getting plants that are toxic for dogs. I did the same thing. Um, thankfully, <laughs> I'm not a super big fan of plants. Not because I don't love plants. Trust me when I say that I do. I love, I love, I love nature. 
I love forests and stuff. But the thing is, I am a plant killer. I have killed five cacti. So after that, I kind of gave up. <clears throat> Kendricks, hi, in, uh, hi to everyone in California. Uh, Sarah. Avery, it's always the youngest that is obsessed with the mom. You know what? I think that's quite true. Because probably... That's why before I used to think that Bailey was always jealous of Summer because I was cuddling with her a lot. Because every time I call Summer, it's always Bailey that comes. But when I call Bailey, it's Bailey that comes. Summer doesn't come sometimes. I, I, I'm telling you, this dog has her own mind. Yeah, maybe. What kind of wipes do you use for them? I just use regular wipes. Um, I've been trying to use the eco-friendly ones, the ones made of bamboo. I think it's called Sanicare. I'm not sure it's, if it's available in all countries. It's just to kind of lessen my guilt of adding too much trash to the environment. But man, after you guys, have you guys watched Sea Spiracy? I was so mind blown by that movie. Ah, I'm pretty sure there's some truth to it, but it makes so much sense when, you know, these big companies may be trying to divert our attention to the bigger problem, which is uh, crazy fishing that they're destroying um, the sea. It makes so much sense because how can you be able to supply that much fish in those all those canned products and there's so many brands out there you guys have to watch it um it made such a huge impact to me because i started getting really really interested in the sea because my dad's um boss had to return to their home country and they had a salt water tank they had nowhere to leave it so he decided to give it to my dad so now we have a salt water tank and I was totally against it. I am guilty that I was totally against it. I was the one who was saying that, no, we cannot have that because it's hard to maintain, which is true. But it did bring a lot of happiness to the family because my dad really, really likes aquariums. So we have a small saltwater tank and there are fishes and corals. And man, they're so beautiful. Um, I'm against caging animals so that's why i do not like aquariums a lot but the thing is the fishes are there already i can't exactly just kill them or i don't know if i can even throw them back to the ocean because that might cause other problems as well anyway that's besides the point that's how i started getting really really interested with the ocean as well i never really researched enough on how big of an impact um things are with the ocean as well like it, it it's oh, it's so amazing everything in this world is connected and if we don't take care of everything we will all be affected and the, you guys have to watch it trust me it, it's it's boring at first but if it um if it means or you know if it uh tingers something in your heartstrings it definitely hit me a lot <laughs> <laughs> all right i got a poodle a toy poodle can you please give me some tips on how to stop them from biting biting is a problem is a common problem when your dog is bored and teething is a common thing that happens to any dog it's not just the poodles because their teeth is um growing during that time that's the peak of the chewing season which is why i had to eventually replace my bed because Bailey was a heavy chewer and she chewed on the feet of my bed. <laughs> uh, what you can do, I suggest, is giving them toys, encourage them with the toys, but make it an exciting experience for them, make it interesting. Um, the idea is for you to tap into the natural instinct of the dog to be hunters. So you can't just give them a dog, uh, a, a dog, <laughs> a toy and hand it over and that's it. You think they would take it. You have to try to make it exciting for them. 
move it around and stuff and make it seem like it's alive or and then throw it see how the dog will react always try to divert the attention of the dog from chewing something you don't want them to chew on and chewing something that they want to chew on another thing you can do is to exercise your dog that's another major mistake um, I neglected exercise I thought that you know walking them around the block after they're doing doing their business like doing potty training and uh, not potty training doing uh, pottying or outside and stuff that was a walk nope my trainer <laughs> hit me on the head and said no that is not a walk that is a potty break an outdoor potty break a proper walk is setting the mindset of your dog that it's time for exercise you will not do anything but walk or and or run with you and another thing I learned is that not all walks can be considered walks why because you have to set the mindset of the dog before they start going for a walk what does that mean when you walk when your dog is still high energy and super excited then that whole walk will be a high energy and crazy walk and that's not one that will release all the energy he said when you walk the dog you have to wait for them to calm down before going out you know how you see in all those training videos of Caesar Milan and Victoria Justice it's me or the dog and stuff how the owners always have a hard time when the owners bring out the leash and then the dogs know that it's time for walks then they're super excited and then they just pull on the leash that shows a lot of excitement I'm not sure if you guys follow us on Instagram but I have been posting you know how I would always make them wait by the door before we dart out for the walks that's kind of how I set the tone but don't get me wrong I am guilty that I don't super wait for them to be very very calm because there are signals that they give when they're already calm. One signal is when their mouth is open and their pupils are not dilated and they're panting. Yeah. The thing is, <laughs> it's kind of hard. I've been trying to take videos of that so that I can share that in information with you guys, but it's been tough to take the video and do the instructions on the dog. <laughs> So I've been trying to teach my assistant to, my assistant for the business, <laughs> double buddy, <laughs> to kind of shoot the videos for me. But the thing is, she hasn't been getting the angles, so we're still, we're, we're still working on it. But there are signals that they give. For example, um, you, when they're super excited, you have to figure out how they are able to release the energy. Energy releasing or stress releasing in dogs is shaking or scratching or yawning um yawning doesn't necessarily mean the dog is um is sleepy that's what i learned from the train from my trainer and that was amazing because it makes so much sense every time i put my dogs in a stressful situation stress stressful in the sense that they're trying to figure out what i want them to do i'm not hitting them or anything but for example, with the walks, Summer, like I said, is very stubborn. So she was the hardest one to break when it comes to giving in to what I want her to do. For example, waiting before she walks out. So she would always yawn. So your dog, you would know if a dog is very smart, if they know how to release that stress. And like I said, those are the three things. They will either yawn, they will shake, or they will scratch those are stress releasing exercise now scratching you know that it could also be a sign of ticks and fleas but if the scratching is happening during the time when you're trying to teach a dog something that's not because they have ticks and fleas or they're itchy or anything it means that they are releasing the stress and dogs need that the same way they need to find an outlet to release the energy so that's that that's very interesting you can check out i'm not sure but i know i heard caesar milan talking about that too because my trainer was in a competition 
wherein Cesar Milan was the either the judge or one of the producers or something. But yeah, they he told me that they got along. But the thing is, I've never heard the side of Cesar Milan. So, but I'll give him the benefit of it. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> He's gonna kill me. <clears throat> okay, let's get on with the questions. Okay, what wipes? So the wipes I use is Sanicare, uh, the bamboo wipes, because I really, really like that smell. And plus the scent is um, safe for the pups. Okay, oh my gosh. <gasps> you guys are getting your dogs! I'm so excited for you! It's going to be a roller coaster ride, but it's going to be so much fun. I have a question. When and how can a male be castrated? As far as I know, as early as six months, but I would recommend that if you can, uh, wait out at least a year. I think it's safer that way, but it depends because there are cases where the dog is maybe super, um, not exactly aggressive, but very dominant. They, It's best to castrate it right away, but th that usually happens for really big dogs and you, if you set out your dog or your puppy uh, with proper training earlier on more often than not you're going to be able to um, avoid those problems anyway <clears throat> but for me if I had a male dog and I don't have any marking issues that I need to fix right away because castrating your pups your male pups earlier on does help with the marking because it lessens the hormones and stuff i would wait it out at least three years if if you are sure that you will not have any accidents in the house because oh, there have been a lot of um i mean i can't judge those people because they are being responsible owners too where they take care of their pups, but there have been, let's say, social influencers that have pups and then they have males and females, of course, and then they say how they're very careful with the, with separating the males and females during heat and stuff, but like I mentioned so many times, there will always be accidents, and true enough, there was an accident, and that pup just gave birth and then right after that, got pregnant again, and now they're facing the consequences. But the pup is fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not judging the people or, I don't know, it's the action that happened. Because, man, really, 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 it's, it's just irresponsible. <clears throat> but that's just my selfish opinion, okay? <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> Hi, Candy, <laughs> and tear for mom. No, 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 it's okay. I have a question. Was it hard to find your poodles? Ha! Oh, that's a funny story to tell, and it, it might be quite long. Um, so, that was one ma major mistake that I made, too. I am guilty that everything that I know now, I, I was totally clueless in the past which was why I've always wanted to start the channel like years back, but I've been so shy because <laughs> I don't think that I would be the best teacher at all. But if whatever experience that I can share will help make your lives easier compared to when I did, then that's more than enough for me. And I guess I just had to really get over that fear. But, um, when I was looking for, um, Summer was the first one. <laughs> I hope my family's not watching, but I told a white lie. <laughs> I told them that she was given to me, but I paid for her. <laughs> so, during that time, when I was doing my research, um, YouTube wasn't as big of a platform, so... <clears throat> There weren't enough, well, there were probably, but I didn't do enough research 
to be able to find anything because in Google search, the only things that would pop up would be the websites and stuff. And mostly, they're the show dog um, websites and etc. So it was overwhelming for me. And the amount of information was just crazy. And there were so many jargon words. So it was hard to decipher. So I resorted to searching for puppies on Facebook, which was the worst idea ever. And back then, seven years ago, some online selling platforms allowed the selling of puppies. But I think now it's illegal, so not a lot of people are able to post um, puppy ads online. So what I did was, of course, I had an office mate back then who was also searching for a pup. So he was the one giving me information about, you know, and he was the one who convinced me to get poodles. Because before, I used to think that poodles were snotty little dogs that are bossy and everything, and, and it's hard. Hello. Um... I I was just banking on what they were telling me, basically. And then I contacted my friends who had toy poodles, and they said they were amazing dogs, so I was convinced. <laughs> and then after that, I would just search for so many... There were so many pup, um, puppy ads online from Facebook and from that website and stuff, and then they had lists of um, descriptions of what they were, and it's usually uh, registered with PCCI or the kennel club, and then two months old, vaccinated, blah, 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 blah. So there were so many checklists. So what I did, the thing is, all the checklists are quite different. So the ones that kept reappearing, I kind of listed them down, and then I had my mini list. Little did I know that that list was mostly the descriptions of um, puppy millers, and I honestly think that they are just breeders because, man, I have nothing against the people who bred summer or uh, the people per se. I don't know what their circumstances are, so I have no right to really judge them. But if you will ask me, honestly, I wouldn't be doing what they are doing. <laughs> Because when I got Summer, she was in a house. I'm sure they are dog lovers. I will not take that away from them. But all their dogs were stacked up in cages. And like I said before, um, I almost didn't get Summer that time. So based on that list, I kind of just did a tick of all those things that maybe should be the standard. And one of them is <laughs> tail docking. And another one is claw removal so okay again I made a lot of mistakes and it was stupid of me not to Google what jukla meant okay Google it is not a phrase that's told to anyone before <laughs> I did not Google what jukla meant I just I, I thought that that was a trait that a poodle should have or tail docking meant it's something that a poodle should also have no um, had I known what I know now back then, I would not have supported that completely. And I would have looked elsewhere. So if you guys don't know, Jew claw removal is basically removing the fifth claw of the dog. That's, so their paws are like that, right? There's a claw here. And most people think that that claw is rendered useless. So they will leave out these four claws. And this one will be literally chopped off. So it's not naturally born like that. They, they, they remove it as puppies. Another thing is tail docking. Tail dock, I used to think that poodles, for example, with Summer, she has a bunny tail, right? I found it so cute and I thought she was born that way. No, she's not born that way. She had a whole tail that they snipped off as a puppy because that was the running deal. Uh, the standard was they docked the tails of poodles. In the past, it was required, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong, to dock the tails of show dogs, but not as short as summer. As far as I know, I think they dock it really short 
to make sure that the pops are or will not be shown for the ones that are being sold as pet pet uh, poodles or something but that's just what I heard from the breeders here at the professional breeders here but now I know the AKC corrected that as well as it's the FCI they no longer require the docking of the tails of the pups oh my gosh we are running an hour again <laughs> I just said I will make this short I'm so sorry but yeah so I made that mistake of not researching enough and I felt so bad because I did not know that that was the case so if you are against tail docking and jew claw removal at least now you know you can google it I have a question my mom is looking for a poodle actually I am currently looking for a pup for my aunt I'm waiting out from a friend and like I mentioned it many times as much as I want to recommend a breeder for everyone you know um, it's so hard I don't want to use um, such public platform to promote breeders not because I don't support their um, practices and stuff like that but because you know every person is different um, for one I don't want to be blamed for any possible mishaps that could happen during the process of um, during the process of getting your own pups because there will always be a lot of problems as well and another thing is I think it's more important for you to be able to find them because it kind of builds that relationship and I do not want to impose my own standards of what a breeder should be to you guys because I know you have your own set of standards whatever I share I hope you will just use them to get insights from my own experiences and then apply it to yours make it yours um, I do not want to be that kind of person who well, <laughs> I do not like the term called influ uh, influencers because, yes, it's true that you influence people. But the thing is, there's that fine line where <laughs> I kind of consider it as I, I kind of consider it as manipulation. For example, um, one of the reasons why I started this channel was in my head, maybe I could start promoting my business and stuff. And then... There are days when, like I have a few videos on it already. It's just that um, there are times where I don't want to talk about it because I don't want people to feel that I am trying to influence them or convince them to support the business that I'm doing. Um, I know it's very idealistic and unrealistic of me to think that way because a lot of people are doing it. And, but just because people are doing it doesn't mean I want to do it as well. It's If ever I do talk about my business, I would want to talk about it just that. And I don't want people to think that it's because I'm marketing it or anything. It's just something that I want to talk about because maybe it's something that people um, want to do too. Like they're looking for uh, like-minded people who are doing the same things or they need that extra push because there was that one friend who did that for me when I started that business. I've been thinking of that business for at least, I think, four years that time because of their health problems, which was why I even partnered up with a friend from Singapore uh, who was actually doing that business right away before I got into it here in the Philippines. And it means so much to me because when you do when you start a business, it's like it's like your baby. So, and I never thought that I could turn it into like a legal, an actual legal legit business that could. It's not enough to sustain me completely, but I'm honestly happy where it stands as of the moment, and we're surviving considering this pandemic. And my goal for it is social entrepreneurship wherein the people I hire are 
My first, uh, the assistant that I was talking about, she's an out of school youth that um, I hired where I'm trying to help her earn enough and I'm allowing her to study if she wants to part-time. And especially now that it's online, so she can study when she wants. And the goal is to help them um, earn for themselves and um, finish college. And whether they want to stay with us or not, that's up to them. <clears throat> so yeah, I am looking for a poodle for my aunt. I have set my mind on one breeder because that breeder is the lesser evil out of all the breeders that are known <laughs> in the Philippines right now. So yeah, um, I have such idealistic ideas, definitely, but I do compromise as well. The idea of setting a standard is just to make sure that you know what is safe, what's right, selfishly for me. <laughs> but based on that, you will know what things you are willing to compromise with. And in my case, that's that. That's why I just choose the least evil option. Because as far as I know, there, I there isn't one yet in the Philippines. Ah, the poodle industry here is, is crazy. It's just it's just it's just so toxic. That's why I don't I, I'm not super active with any of the groups locally and maybe they hate me too. <laughs> Before I used to care, but now I don't care. Kennedy, hi, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please share the food mistakes that you did. Food. For food. They used to be on kibble before. The breeder of summer, um, she was feeding her yukanuba. So for the first six months, I was feeding her yukanuba, puppy food. For Bailey, they were feeding her akana already, akana puppy. I really thought that breeder was um, great because they were definitely a lot better than my experience with summer. But let's just leave it at that. Again, they're good people. I will not take it away that they're also good. Um, they're pet lovers. They're sincerely pet lovers. It's just really their practices that I don't support. And here in the Philippines, it's just sad because people are very defensive when you tell them of something. For example, if somebody tells me in the business that, you know, something happened to my pup, uh, because of your treats or your food or your your toys and stuff. Then the normal reaction here in the Philippines is they get defensive that uh, they will make excuses for the product. Whereas, in my opinion, it wouldn't hurt to give it the benefit of the doubt as well that it could have been. Um, so instead, my take or at least what I teach my people is that, you know, just always give it the benefit of the doubt and try to solve the problem. For example, if a customer says that, <laughs> I'm not exactly promoting the idea of customers like lying and stuff. I mean, if they do lie about it in my head, that's on them. That's no longer on me. I mean, whatever. If you trick me, then you're happy about it. Um, causing people that's basically stealing that's on you that's no longer on me and of course we try to filter things out so let's say if somebody blames the product then it would be that you know the, the easiest thing I would do is refund them or if they can um, show me that proof that it really was caused by the products that we um, that we sold then I would give the refund and would be happy to shoulder the vet expenses as well. That, that's just it. it, it you know, um, accidents happen and stuff. But as an owner, uh, for example, when I use certain products, I do not blame the companies, probably because I own my own company and I know how it feels. I always give it the benefit of the doubt as a buyer as well. Um, you know, that 
it's not the company it could be my dog too like for example for choose you know how sometimes in the states uh let's say the dogs choke and stuff while it's probably true that the dogs choke because the trigger is the treat or the chew or the toy or something it's also half the fault of the owner in my opinion because probably they were kind of ignoring the dog and not supervising the dog when they're chewing or something for me it's it's both ways it's not just the fault of one person and i will own up to that too which is why i choose not to blame the companies of course unless if the product is defective or let's say it's expired and they sold that to me of course i'm going to give them <laughs> i'm going to give them hell too <laughs> So it really depends on the situation. Another for food mistakes. That was a very long segue. Um food mistakes. I did not know and do a lot of research on food, which is why they were on kibble for at least a whole year. But during those times, it was always me shifting from one food to another. So I would only buy the really really small bags or the per kilo bags. And the thing is they would always get allergies. Summer was constantly having hot spots and her coat wasn't as thick as this right now. So my vet and I really tried a lot of uh, Royal Canin, Science Diet, Akana, Go Natural. What what were the others? Holistic dog food. Uh, no, I did not try pedigree because I had a bad experience with pedigree with my first dog. If your dog is doing well with pedigree, by all means. Uh, but I would not recommend it for my I, well, I personally don't like it. Uh, what else? So many other dog foods back then. I totally forgot. And the only thing that we stuck with was I think Akana because origin was too heavy for them and their stool wasn't good so i had to go back to akana but there were days when they won't really take it so i had to shift them to another meal and they started being okay with go naturals i think turkey everything else they would always have allergies which was why i really thought that she had chicken allergies <laughs> she had pork allergies i thought bailey had beef allergies And then when finally they started getting a little bit of allergies with Go Naturals as well, that's when we started um, going into uh, all natural home cooked meals. It was the vet who suggested it, and after that, it it was a breeze. Um, another food mistake is not training them how to be respectful of the meals. So that was one training that my dog trainer taught me well where it's good to have uh food manners where thankfully they don't have food guarding they don't mind sharing with each other but it's a good precaution if you have kids um it's good if you will regularly put your hand inside the bowl and remove it or try to take away the meals and then put it back making sure that they know that you mean no harm that the food is safe you're not really taking it away from them so i did not do that before but <clears throat> excuse me i saw the importance of that training when <laughs> i've had my fair share of experiences with dogs i trained a chow chow a 3 month old chow chow for another friend and when she arrived in my place the thing is um the owner of the female of the chow chow wasn't exactly the best trainer i mean i wasn't the best trainer either but the thing is their dogs run the house and man they are chow chows so when that pup eclair uh, arrived they did not even provide me a crate or anything So I had to leave her on the seat of my um of my car. When I did that, she started den denning 
on the car seat so I couldn't bring her down. Oh my gosh, I, 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 I get stressed when I think about that experience because that time I could at least kind of read um, the dogs a little bit because I got used to reading my own dogs and I knew she was ready to attack me because I was a complete stranger to her and I was trying to get her from her den. But thankfully, she easily gets lured by treats. So I lured her out with treats. But the thing is, I think she wasn't trained for the food manners. I was bitten <laughs> that time. I'm not sure if I went to the hospital for an injection. It wasn't a serious bite, but it de definitely punctured my hand. And that was really scary. I almost backed out of <laughs> that. But the thing is, what in my head, oh my gosh, where am I? Who's going to take this dog? I mean, she was, my friend was in the States and she was planning to fly this dog there. And if there's no one to help this dog, who's going to help this dog? <laughs> so I kind of put that pressure on myself. And thankfully, my trainer was so nice. He, I, he was no longer hired by me. Like, I don't, I don't pay him that time. Yet, he still helped me with that. So, I'm super, super thankful to my trainer. You know who you are. Um, so, the first thing I had to teach her was food manners. And <laughs> since I was bitten, what I did was, you know, those wraps that you use when you have sprains. So, I wrapped it in my hand <laughs> before I would put my hand on the food and stuff. Because she was really growling every single time I would take her food. So, he gave me routines where... I would leave uh, the bowl or she can only take the bowl when she's sitting or and I give her the command. And man, that was, that was the best dog training experience that I've had because after training that chow, my confidence level when it comes to training really boosted because I didn't think I could train that chow. <laughs> and to this day, the owners of the chow um, are super thankful to whatever it is that we taught her because they said that they have neighbors who have chows as well but they're not they're not like a Claire who is respectful and um, has food manners and stuff they were very aggressive because one thing I learned with any dog especially of course certain breeds are bred to be a certain way so chows have the natural tendency to be um, quite stubborn and um, dominant and stuff but if you train the dog, a chow can be such an amazing pup. My, my dad loved Eclair so much. It's just that, again, like I said, my mom is not, is not into it. And I felt bad because Eclair wasn't allowed in the house. And the only reason why I said yes to that dog training, because you guys might tell me that I told you that we have allergies and stuff. Yes, I did have allergies. I always had rashes. So... It was antihistamine galore then. Um, Mom was in the States that time <laughs> with my siblings. So it was my dad and I who was with Eclair. So I got away with it. <laughs> but my, I, I, I could see my mom's reaction over the phone every time when I told her, that, Mom, I'm training a chow. Don't worry. It, you know, I'm not going to keep it. I knew that she couldn't get mad at me <laughs> because... I said it to her when my aunt was right beside her. And she's the type of person who will not explode when other people are around. She will explode when she's talking to me in private. But at least I got my way. And at least, thankfully, she's not into YouTube yet. So she won't be able to hear this. And it's too far out in the video. So, yeah, those, those, that's, those are my horns. Kids, do not copy. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, but it's with limitation. Again, it's not, it's not my house, so I have to follow her rules. <laughs> this is my room. I pay for everything in this room, but it's still not my house. So there are limitations to what I can do. Yeah. <laughs> right? See? Can I'm not the only one. Candy. Candy's owner is saying... Poodles were snotty. I, I really thought that because I think it was because of the show 101 Dalmatian. You know how, I don't know if you guys have watched it, but the different owners, 
and then the one who owned the poodle was the purple girl and she she looked very snotty <laughs> and yeah <gasps> thank you oh my gosh my hair is cooperating today but more often than not i promise i look like an anime character because my hair flies like that um when it when the weather is nice that's the only time it it cooperates <clears throat> Shout out to Francine. Thank you for your comment. Angelica. Oh my gosh, you guys are so welcome. I, I'm really happy that whatever advice, whatever I share is of help even to like a small number of people. That, that, that really means a lot to me. And I'm super thankful. What about when it's super hard? It's finding a breeder is definitely not the easiest thing. I have my fair share of experience where I lost a lot of money because I was tricked. I lost, I think that was around $2,000 or conversion. Around 2000 to $3,000. I lost, that's around 150,000 pesos because I tried, yeah. Okay, please do not judge me too much. I tried to import a pet from abroad. Uh, the pet was brought here, but the pet arrived with a genetic health condition that w is um, dangerous for my two girls because it can be passed down. Um, it can be transmitted uh, physically through saliva, anything a fur anything that they get in contact with so i had to rehome that pup and the breeder said that they would replace the pup but they never did until now um there were so many excuses at first she said yes uh early last year she was supposed to replace the pet and um, the pandemic happened, so that was another excuse. And then after that, it just kept going on and on and on nonstop until to this day, <laughs> the excuse is still the pandemic. And recently, as of December, I think, of last year, they stopped replying to me. And I kind of I haven't really given up, but I don't expect anything anymore. Um, that was really a painful <laughs> charge to experience. <laughs> but those things can happen, which is why I do not want to get involved with any recommendations whatsoever when it comes to breeders. Um, this is also why I put a lot of disclaimers in whatever claims I make because in, in the internet, uh, you will never please everybody. And I totally understand that. And I have no plans of pleasing everybody. I'm just trying to please myself. But um, if it does influence people in other ways, of course, I cannot help but feel guilty in certain ways. So as much as I can, I try to be as responsible as I can with whatever it is I post online. Um, I'm against <laughs> internet hate, probably because I'm a teacher. Um, I taught digital literacy to kids, so I have to, you know, live by what I taught. Otherwise, my students will think I'm a hypocrite. But I've been trying to hide from all of them. <laughs> so, yeah. That's why I, I'm so thankful for whatever it is, this small community that we are building. Um, it's very positive, uh, very, very supportive, and it's great. You know, the pet parent industry, uh, the pet industry in general is amazing. There are so many wonderful people. You're going to meet a lot of wonderful people, just as there are <laughs> very toxic people as well. Sadly... <laughs> I haven't found a community here in the Philippines on Facebook and other social platforms that aren't toxic because people can get toxic. 
and I have anxiety. I was diagnosed with anxiety, which was why I got my two girls and they helped me a lot with that. So <laughs> my motto in life is to avoid things that will cost me issues and anxiety. So if, if something is just going to cause me problems, then I will just stay away from it. I, it's not because I don't like fights or anything like that. Believe me when I say that. I love fighting. Like I will stand for what I believe in. But if I can avoid it and if I can avoid confrontation because I will always, always, always try to look at it from another person's perspective because I respect that we come from different cultures and stuff, then I will try to avoid it. But if I'm pushed to the limit, of course I will fight back. I bite back too. <clears throat> How hard are the first few days with my girls? Um, surprisingly, with summer, it it was it was it was a breeze. I I I, I never really had a problem with her. She never. When I say that. Um, I potty trained her. That's me doing 20% of the work. And she did 80% of the work. Because she just pottied in one area. And then I put the newspaper there. And I left it there. The next time she pottied, she pottied on the newspaper where she originally pottied. And then when I started moving the newspaper around, she just started following where the newspaper was. So I was so amazed because... Like, wow, because my chihuahua, he was potty trained, but he would still pee everywhere and mark everywhere. But then again, maybe that's because of um, genetic, not genetics, uh, the, the hormones and stuff. Because he was a male and they were females. But besides that, it was a breeze. It was when <laughs> Bailey came into the picture when it started becoming a roller coaster. Because they were completely different. They uh, have different personalities. This one's a lot more hyper and active. This one is lazy and stuff. And she was the cuddly type. She didn't like being cuddled. but ev So everybody would cuddle somewhere more. So she would get jealous. And that's where the whole fiasco of like barking and playing and going crazy and stuff. Summer had a chewing stage but she never chewed on furniture probably because her snout was very small as well and her teeth were relatively smaller than Bailey because Bailey has the standard um, conformation of poodles where their snouts are quite long Summer doesn't have that she actually fails in a lot of aspects in the conformation or the breed standard of poodles Bailey falls closely under the breed standard which was why I think she's the heavier chewer. Because Summer will always lose in the game of tug um, between the two. Ah, that's one tip I can give you guys. If the play or the playing time is not controlled, there should not be toys between your two dogs or any new dog that you have with the old dogs. Because tugging, it looks like they're having fun, but that's actually challenging each other. And that's what I learned from my dog trainer. He said it's not good to have toys when it's not a controlled environment. So no toys when um, it's the first few days. Because that was when I think the competition between the two happened. So the only hard part during Bailey's transition with us was her... Um, being hyperactive and chewing. I think that was the hardest because uh, she really chewed on furniture. Like she killed a lot of furniture. Although Summer was notorious also in her own sense because she killed three Havis that I have. <laughs> Havianas. And they were brand new. I only like the Havianas because they last me a long time. Which was why they were my preferred slippers. But now not anymore because of her. So she loves chewing on the Havianas. She chewed on three. Two brand new ones and then one old one. And she also chewed on my cord, my charging cord, when I had my, Sam my first Samsung back then. So yeah, 
She she had her own notorious stage, but she drew the line <laughs> with the cord because I really scolded her big time that time. But after I scolded her, she never did it again. Like, she never touched any of the cords or chewed on my slipper. Although, she does still sleep on my slippers, which was something that she's always done as a puppy. I don't know why. My slippers smelled so bad. Because Havayanas have that rubbery smell, right? And then ma- Mitch mixed with uh, stinky feet. <laughs> but she loves it. And I'm like, oh my god, I just gave you a bath and you're gonna lean on that and then you're gonna be on my bed and stuff. But yeah, crazy dog. What treats do I use? I use all natural treats for my two girls. Uh, I, I don't think it would hurt. Um, I use Pawfic Plate and that's the brand I co-own. That's the one I co-started. So we have been using that. I used to import back then. Um, I think that was 2014, 2015 when I would always import from Singapore and it was from my friend who created treats and stuff so I was getting from her and I kind of partnered up with her there and when she closed her company that was when she was the one who convinced me to start my own here so that's basically the background of the business that I was working with so I have been um, I have been kind of learning that industry since 2014, I think, or 2015. It was 2016 or 2017 when I registered the company. <coughs> so yeah, I give them Pawfic Plate before I get them from Japan. Any dehydrated products, because back then in the Philippines, there weren't dehydrated treats. There were only baked treats. And or the ones from this high-end all-natural store, Bao and Wow. Okay, so from Sandra. Hi, I remember you saying that you have, you miss having puppies. <laughs> what would you say that you miss the most? Just cannot wait for my puppy to mature and calm down a little bit. Um... I miss the craziness sometimes. You, you'd be surprised. I think once your pup matures and uh, get lazy like this, sometimes you will miss the hyper um, and the cuteness. Come on. They're so fluffy and cute. Don't you, don't you miss puppies? What else do I miss as, a pu- uh, as puppies? I don't know. Maybe buying a lot of things. Because when they were puppies, I just... I kept buying so many stuff. It was it, it was so much fun. But I also realized that was a mistake because I wasted so much money on so many useless things. I could have saved that money for something else. Okay. What type of ear wipes do you use? I do not use wipes. I just use like... Uh, is it here? No. Well, it's something like a bottle. This, this isn't the one. Uh... And then you just pour it on their ear. And then I just use basically a flat cotton wipe to clean out their ear. I think the brand I currently use is Verbac. I'll see if I can... Po- I'll, I'll post it later in the comments. I'll pin it, I promise. <clears throat> what did the pups have? What did the pups have? Can you please clarify your question? Okay. Angelique. Our new miniature poodle loves my floods. <laughs> I now keep my shoes up on the bar stool or in front. Yeah, for the time being, I think it's best to keep your shoes um, away from the pups because uh, they're quite notorious with that. But so long as you desensitize them from not chewing those things, offer them toys or treats. Kong toys are amazing for diverting their attention. I would make frozen Kong treats for them when they start chewing. So I veer them away. And then since they love fetch anyway, I would just throw a toy. And that would almost immediately divert their attention to the toy. Because that's trying to trigger their hunting instincts. So in my experience, um, using the instincts of a dog to maximize um, training is the best way to go. 
um, try to tap into their natural instincts. See if you can find information online on what natural dog instincts that you can use to associate with your training. Um, that really, really helps because they learn faster that way. One last thing, because, oh my gosh, again, and, and it's been an hour and a half. Thank you guys so much for staying. Um, what was I going to say? Lost it. Uh, I really lost it. Oh my gosh. I'm getting old. What, I, what was I going to say about dog training? Ah, for dog training, um, you have to figure out the kind of personality that your dogs have. Because based on that, that's, that's the kind of training that you will have to work with them. And let's say if, if you're trying to find a trainer, find a trainer that will work best for your kind of personality. Because the trainer that I've had, I've been recommending him to friends. But the thing is, his type of training is not for everybody as well, which I respect. And um, which is why I also don't recommend unless I'm asked. Because we all have our different standards when it comes to those things. So, yeah. Um, the training that works best for my dogs is one that I associate with their natural instincts. For example, crate training was important because I tapped into the denning um, instinct of a dog. A crate is not a cage for them. Um, it's a cage if they're just left there forever. But if it's used to control whatever it is or to give them some sort of safe haven that they can turn in and out on their own, then that's not a cage. Um, to some people, it can be, it, it may seem inhumane, but trust me when I say that dogs actually love the crate. When I took away the crate, um, it took a while for the girls to get used to the beds because the bed became their sort of crate. <clears throat> because I trained them in my room, if you guys are curious. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Um, if you guys have any more questions, just feel free to comment them down because um, as much as I can, we reply to all the comments. And one last thing, I posted uh, something on the community tab and I promised that I would be making a Facebook group for everyone. So we finally decided on a name. It's gonna be called the Pet Parent Club. Uh, I think there are a few ones already, but you'll see the difference. It's gonna be by the Puro Mom. <laughs> I still find it embarrassing that I call myself that. Anyway, going back. So it's going to be called the Pet Parent Club because I didn't want it to be very, very exclusive to just Poodle owners because I think we're building a community of responsible pet parents. I kind of <laughs> created like a distinguished names for, uh, well, I kind of, it's, it's not good practice, but I categorize pet owners or yeah, as pet owners or pet parents, um, I would consider myself the pet a pet parent because I'm a little excessive in certain ways. The pet owners treat their dogs as just pets. Uh, as for the pet, uh, the pet parents treat them as family. It's not to kind of distingu distinguish or anything. It's more of just uh, views. So if you guys are interested, um, I will be posting it on the community tab as well. Feel free to join. Um, I, we also put some questions before you en get to enter and join the community because I want to limit it to uh, like-minded people. Um, I, like I said, I do not want toxicity. Uh, <laughs> a small group, knit, uh, a, a small niche of people who are like-minded would be great and maybe we can help each other, each other out and we can be more active there. And maybe, I don't know, um, I'm sure when the puppy arrives of my aunt, I am going to be forced to train the pup. They haven't told me, but I'm sure that's on its way. <laughs> so yeah, um, look forward to that. There's, 
I'm gonna try to video as much as raw uh, as much raw videos that I can with the puppy especially with the potty training at least you you guys will be able to see it firsthand and how I was able to do it and so yeah um if you guys are interested we'll start with a Facebook group first because I know there are a lot of younger ones who do not have um, Facebook yet maybe we can form a discord group as well I know not everyone is familiar with discord but since I do gaming <laughs> for fun and for stress relieving uh, discord is the way to go so it's also fun to do discord and I can just post it on the Facebook page as well anyway okay so please feel free to check uh, to search it out the pet parent club I will also post um, how to join it on the community tab maybe tomorrow <laughs> not right now okay so that's it thank you guys so much for joining us once again the girls are super thankful over there <laughs> it may not seem like it and on the group that's where I will be posting the giveaway as well as here on um, YouTube because Chris Christensen sent us a lot of shampoo to give out but sadly as of the moment it's gonna be for the Philippines but I decided that maybe I can send one gift also for an international um, viewer just to be fair I will take it from their <laughs> bank account <laughs> from what they're earning from YouTube because yes would you guys be interested in videos on the YouTube channel like if you're considering getting uh, starting your own channel and you, if you're gonna earn a little bit because to be honest I mean it's not a lot of money but they do earn quite a bit I was shocked and if you're living in the States or in other countries it might not that it might not be big but a couple of hundred dollars is um, you know <laughs> a good amount to save up for their own expenses so at the very least they're able to pay for their own expenses which I'm super thankful for and I'm I cannot thank you guys enough for that um, just your views the likes uh, sharing the videos that's more than enough um, so so thank you I never <laughs> I never really expected this channel to grow to this much like 5,000 people I was only aiming for a thousand people <laughs> and that was like a long shot when I was starting it like ooh, I have a hundred that's more than enough for me because I'm super happy because <laughs> I'm so scared of getting like a big audience because the bigger the audience the bigger the stress as well because quite frankly too I'm running out of ideas sometimes or the, uh, YouTube burnout is real okay so We'll see you guys next time. We'll try to do lives. No, not we will not try. I promise to do lives at least once a month. I think that's more than enough time. Uh, if you guys are interested in more lives, then we'll see. Because <laughs> uh, life has been crazy lately. Okay? I will not take much more of your time. Thank you guys once again. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Have a good night. And good morning to the other people all around the world. Or good afternoon. Because, oh my gosh, how am I going to end this? Maybe the X button.